Okay, well, excited to be here uh, on my 50th draft, uh, a half a century of drafts, and uh, I drift back a, a long ways thinking about um, the different ones over the last half century. Um, very excited uh, about um, where we are right now and, and being here today. Um, obviously, everyone, the other 31 teams are excited too. It's the nature of the business. But I really want to emphasize, I think it's, it's stunning and will in the future prove to be, um, you know, quite epic when, when you see that we've gotten a quarterback and two edge rushers like we have all within the context of this draft. The first three picks, obviously one pick next year uh, for Carson, the other pick, we won't know what it is, but when you can get your franchise quarterback and what we feel are two outstanding edge rushers, I mean, special guys, um, it's very hard to do, particularly when you're not even drafted in the top 20 uh, picks of the draft. So um, I, I couldn't be more excited. Um, we uh, talked a lot about a lot of different scenarios. Um, I know you guys will probably have some questions about tackle still and that sort of thing. But really, um, I, I, I believe that we'll look back and say, this may have put us in a Super Bowl, this draft, as this class matures with the group we already have and we add some finishing touches because it's really special to have gone from what are we going to do at edge rusher now to it being a big time strength of ours. So um, couldn't be more excited. I'll just uh, open it up for questions. Okay, first up is Charlie Clifford. Jim, congrats on the picks. At tackle, as you mentioned, is there a benefit potentially going into the season, keeping Quentin where he's at, just to have him as a safety valve during the season? Is that something that's crossed your mind when you look at the tackle spot? I, I think so. I, I think in talking with Coach and, and Chris, um, that, that that's the most – um, that, that that's the greatest likelihood that that we would um, uh, uh, go into it with 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 that sort of mindset. Um, you know, we feel that Tabby can can um, do a very solid job there, um, pass protect and do the things that we need to get done next to that outstanding offensive line um, that he, that he would be joining. Um, there's there's other options that could come down the line, but I really, I, I think keeping the four where they are and finding the tackle. And if it's Tevi to start with and, and to finish with um, that, that's a possibility. Chap. Yeah, Jim, uh, a non-draft question. You guys, Chris has made it very clear that your intent is to get something done with Darius and Braden and maybe Naheem this off season. With the cap space and how you guys approach extensions, meaning not really a lot of signing bonus, how realistic is that and how optimistic are you can get that done? I, I think we can get it done. I, I think it's just a question of finding numbers with, with each extension that, that makes sense. Um, and I, I really feel that we should be able to get it done we understand where the market is and we're willing to pay um, what we feel is market value to get these deals done. Um, and so I'm, I'm very, I'm very optimistic that we're going to be able to get them done. Um, I, I'm planning on the fact that that we'll be getting them done. I, I'd be surprised if we didn't. For all three or just for, I mean, primarily the two guys and see what happens with Naheem. Can you get all three done? Well, definitely um, Darius and Braden, and, and um, uh, it, it's possible with Naheem too. Um, it, it just depends. Um, it just depends again on what what the numbers are. But um, Darius and Braden, um, we're we're looking forward to um, coming to extensions for those guys. Uh, 
and that's part of our plan. Thanks, Jim. Mike Wells. Hey, Jim, I'm going to go back to the uh, tackle position. Obviously, you guys have been talking about that since Anthony uh, retired. What makes you guys believe you guys have enough on a roster? To, well, I mean, I know the offseason, there's still time in the offseason, but you have enough to be able to just keep those four in the same spot and then have somebody come in and protect Carson's blind side um, next season? Well, uh, again, I, I think that um, you look at the whole offensive line and how they develop as a group of, of five. And um, I think Tevi's bo body of work shows that he's very capable. Um, he's a veteran, I, I think, that can get the job done. Um, there's, other, there's other options that, that could uh, come about that, that we could look at. But um, I, I'm, I'm very confident. I, I, I know I've talked to Chris and, and obviously talking to, to Frank Reich, um, you know, whose offense is looking to un unfold under this scenario. And, and we, we had a lot of conversations, um, uh, you know, going into these first two picks and, and, and seeing what might materialize. But um, we're, we're not in, in, in a panic mode, and, and we believe that um, uh, if we were playing um, a couple weeks from now, that, that we would have an outstanding offensive line with Tevi. And, and we're just going to see, you know, where we go from there and whether what other opportunities present themselves. But again, September's still a long way away. I, I, there, there's still a lot of things and a lot of possibilities that could come up between now and then. So um, we're just, um, you know, going to look at all the possibilities that could help us. When you when you looked at the, when you looked at the uh, the tackles in this draft class, were you just were you guys as a team did not feel overly impressed with them, or didn't feel like they would be the type of guys you guys wanted on the roster as far as being able to contribute and help in the in the facet you wanted to? Well, um, quite frankly, uh, you know, at, at 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 four and five, at, as it may be, people jumped in front of us. Uh, we, we, we had some guys we, we really liked, um, and uh, that happens. It, it just, um, uh, you're, you're getting up on that pick and you're getting pretty close and, and um, that tackle goes off the board that, that uh, you thought was a, gonna be a, um, a good possibility. Uh, not in round one or two, but, but after that, once we got into the, to the fourth round and, and that sort of thing. So um, again, there is no guarantees with, with those type of football players. You're hoping they could be the guy. And we, we like some guys there, but again, they, it, the board just didn't um, give us that opportunity. Uh, and, you know, we knew that uh, going into it. We, um, I, I know Chris um, held Pat and, and he, he always makes the right decision in terms of uh, not feeling like we had to trade up and be desperate or anything. So, um, we were very solid about going edge rusher as rusher and one and two. And then, then after that, we had a couple opportunities, but, uh, again, like I said, sometimes right before you're going to pick your guy goes and it, it happened to be, um, a couple of times in round four and five. Zach Keeper. Hey Jim, um, when you walked off the field in Buffalo, where did you want to get better? Where did you think this team needed to improve and, was it pass rush all along the focus? Cause you guys went there with the first two picks. Well, well, no question that I really believe again, putting pressure on the quarterback is, is, is the most critical thing besides us having the quarterback. And, and um, I, I think with, with Carson, we have a chance for someone who can be really special. Um, and, uh, he, he's got immense talent. Uh, we don't feel like the league has seen, um, what he can totally do, um, because we think it's special. And again, it, it comes after putting pressure on the quarterback. You saw our Tennessee game in Tennessee. You, you saw what happened when, when we have a relentless pass rush, we saw the Super Bowl. With, with Kansas City, these guys are so good. You can't let them 
sit back there and throw the football. And with the rules now, with corners not being able to jam guys and touch guys very much, it's almost impossible for some even outstanding corners like Kenny Moore to cover guys for a long period of time. You have to bring pressure. And I think you have to remember we have other things in the works here, inclu including um, Ture, in including Blitzing Darius or Kenny, in including DeForest, of course. Um, but, but adding these edge rushers, these type of guys, and these guys are heavyweights. I mean, they're not, um, uh, you know, outside linebackers, you know, that you don't know what they're going to do at the point. And, you know, can they bull rush and do they have a speed rush? I mean, these guys are strong heavyweight guys. I mean, um, at the, with, with great athletic um, ability and speed. Um, so, I mean, I can't tell you, again, as I started saying when we started this conversation, we are, we, we're a completely different football team with these two edge rushers and Carson Wentz at quarterback. I mean, that changes everything. That, that, that really, and it has to be proved, we have to go out and play. And th these guys with their teammates have to show what that brings. Um, but we think it, it's going to bring um, something very special here. And you have to have, you have to be able to get after the quarterback. And, um, you know, you can only blitz so much. Um, you can blitz sometimes, but you have to be able to beat guys in man-to-man -man situations at the line of scrimmage. And that's what, that's what these two guys can do. I, I, I mean, these guys are special guys coming in. I, I, I mean, you can make an argument that they could have been much, much higher picks um, for various reasons. I, I, I can't tell you. I, I, I have never in my 50 years sat there in a 24-hour period, got two edge rushers like this, um, back to back. I mean, it, it's, it's, um, remarkable, um, as it is, um, Landon Carson and, and those things falling together at the right time. I mean, when you get, you know, a quarterback in his twenties that you think is your quarterback for now and the future, big time, big time. And, and you get two edge rushers that you think, I mean, these are the, the real guys. I mean, these guys are really outstanding football players, relentless, big, strong, talented guys that can, that can beat one-on-ones um, and, and change dimensions of the game. I, I don't think anyone quite realizes what the franchise is, a, has done adding these three guys to what we already have. I mean, to me, it, it's, it's going to, it has to be proven, but, but, but like I said, I, I think everything's changed and we've gone up a notch um, exactly where we need to be. Now the these you know the young players have to develop and and things have to happen. It just doesn't happen overnight and instantly in September or something. But um, we're looking for the, you know everyone to merge as quickly as possible, um, and it's really exciting. I I mean I'm telling you I you know you know I sit back there and the Buffalo game ended and 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 being in there and in, in February and that sort of thing, thinking that that we we're going to have our quarterback situation, these two edge rushers um, on, on our football team. I mean, those are the number one and two things that you look for, the quarterback and the edge rushers. That, that, that is the premium in this league. First the quarterback, then the guy that can get the quarterback down. And for, for us to, to do and Chris Ballard to do what he did, I, I think is going to prove to be um, really a stroke of, of brilliance uh, as it plays out. Jim Ayala. Hey, Jim, I just wanted to ask about a couple other positions that you have mentioned, I think, on radio appearances and some other times that we've spoken with you. You wanted to add uh, a corner. I know you, you said you, you, know, you felt like the team was a corner away and then a playmaker. You, you had mentioned Tyreek Hill and, and um, Travis Kelsey. Just wondering, obviously, those are things you haven't maybe hit yet, but something you can address later on. Well, our corners just got a whole lot better. I mean, I promise you that. Um, you know, uh, with these two edge rushers coming in, they, they, they just got, everyone got a whole lot better in the secondary. Um, uh, but 
you're always looking for corners. You never have enough. Um, it, it's something we'll look at. I mean, we, I mean, I mean, we, we, we like, you know, the safety. We, we, we like Sean. We like what, what, what he's going to bring, uh, you know, to the table in, in a big way. I think he's a hard hitting guy who um, uh, is, is, is really going to, going to be someone that we don't have. I mean, I'm not saying I won't even mention Bob Sanders names because that's not fair, but, but I mean, this guy is, is a difference maker with, with the power he packs as a tackler. And, and, um, and, and I love, I love the tight end uh, for my Alamarta, you know, SMU. Um, I couldn't have covered him when I was there. I know that, but um, uh, Kylan is, is, um, really ha has a chance to to make a big impact on, on this football team and sure we're, we're looking to address different areas that that can make us stronger we're always looking for another corner um and uh you know we we know left tackle um would be the biggest question that that we would get asked but this was too good of an opportunity um Again, to have a weakness or somewhat of a weakness and a question mark at edge rusher, now all of a sudden everything has changed, you know, and, and the whole defense, the whole football team's a better football team um, because of what we've done. Stephen Holder. Hey, Jim. I thought it was uh, notable that you didn't just take uh, pass rushers. You took two guys who were – who are – really physical guys are not, you know, sort of just speed guys. Um, does that sort of uh, appeal to you? Because I know that, and, and Chris and Frank have definitely talked about toughness and, and being able to, to impose your will physically. And what, what does it say to you? And did you kind of, uh, what was your response to that type of profile player? <clears throat> well, it really appeals to me. I, I, I want to say that, um, look at, you know, in our conference, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Tennessee, you, you, you know that the, the type of physical defensive play that, that you could expect out of those football teams. And, 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 and we view ourselves, of course, with this defense that's come around to where it is to being really special and have a chance to be very special. And there is no question that um, – you know, you want to be able to travel anywhere and play anyone, and you do that with your offense and defensive line. And, and this changes the whole dynamic with these guys because, I mean, these guys are terrors. I mean, they, they, these guys are men. I mean, they are ready to come in, and, and I mean, they're, they're special football players, and they're running hit guys with relentless motors. I mean, that's what we look for more than anything – it is you want those guys that just, you know, that, that just play so, so hard. And, and um, obviously with Robert Mathis and Freeney, we had that here. Um, and, and these guys are even bigger guys. Uh, I, I mean, they're, they're um, they, they, it's really, it really changes the dynamic of things. And, and like I said, the, the players that they're going with, um, it, you know, it gives, uh, Matt, the defensive coordinator, so, so many more options. So there's no question when we took both of them, Stephen, we know what kind of statement we were saying. I, I mean, when you, when you play the Colts, um, you know, you, you, you better be ready because, um, you, you know, we're, when, we, when, when we're on defense, I mean, we are coming after you. I, I, I mean, and, and, and that, I think, is the most important thing you have to do. And it's not just sacks, but the quarterback has to know it's not a touch football game. And um, so I, I think that's, um, that's so critical. And, and we really feel we've achieved that. 